may be a belief that will come and then he will show up once the belief changes he then will show up okay and so i forgot verse 16 let me grab it i'm sorry verse 16 then says then said thomas which is called didymus unto his fellow disciples let us let us also go that we may die with him y'all please catch that right there let us also go. It is so, ooh, listen, Thomas, tell me, y'all, let, let, let us come on. We're we going to go so that we may also, we gonna, we want we want to die and go to the place where Lazarus is. And don't even have a full context of what he's saying, but he's saying, listen, uh, if you're going to be that good to Lazarus, then let me catch the same thing that Lazarus got so you can be that good to me as well. We want we want to go to that same place as well. And so then let me set let me set this thing up so I can help y'all to understand before I slide out of here. There was some sickness that was there, right? Sickness. Lazarus was sick. Jesus began to give an illustration about how to appropriately walk. He says, "Look, you need to make sure that you're walking in the daytime because if you walk in the daytime, the light of the world shines within." But if you walk at night, you'll stumble and the light of the, he says, the light is nowhere in him. Then he goes to talk about and say, listen, I understand that you found yourself in a bad predicament, but let me say this to you right here. If you uh, would just change the way you believe, then I will come unto you. I'm trying to help someone to get out of a dilemma, trying to help somebody to get out of a situation. If you would just change, I understand you're sick, baby. I understand that the Lord understands that he sees that you're sick. You're sick, baby. You're sick. You got a lot that's going on. You know, it's a lot of stuff that's happening. It's a lot of stuff that's taking place. And you're sick, just like Lazarus. You're sick. Jesus gave reason as to why you're sick. You have not been walking in the day. You've been walking in the night. That's why you're stumbling. That's what's got you sick, baby. That's what's got you messed up. You've been walking at the wrong time. You've been doing inappropriate things. You've been walking at the wrong time, conducting yourself inappropriately. He says, but okay, I'm going to use this and let it work together for your good. I'm glad, he said, that I was not there. Why? Because there is a belief that needs to change in you. See, the way you believe first must not have been the right way. Because if it was the right way, it would have been enough to keep you. It would have been enough to hold you because when you believe right you don't be changed off of what you believe is right. I wish somebody would catch what I just said to you. When you believe right you, you're you not changed. You're not swayed because you know that that is right. So if you got to be washed and got to believe again then that means that there has been some stumbling in darkness. That means that there has been something inappropriate that has been taking place and so Jesus said this right here he says, listen, I'm glad for your sake that I was not there for the intent that you may believe, okay? So that there can be a belief system. And then he said, once the belief system change, he says, then that's when I will go. And so I cannot come why y'all are finding fault. I cannot show up while you are still walking in darkness. I cannot come while you are making accusations. I wish I had some intercessors. I wish I had some people that will pray for me because I know when I hear the Spirit of God, when I tell you the enemy has tried me today, and it was all because he didn't want me to release this. I know that's what it was, but listen, oh baby, I'm going to let it Rip. He says, look, 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 he's trying to let somebody know that I am more for you than I am against you. I want to see you win. You've got to know the reason why the situation is like it is, is because you are stumbling. You are walking in a darkness. You are walking in darkness, but I'm going to use it for your good. If you would change the way you believe, see, you're, you're believing that you are defeated. But if you would just believe that there is a win 
sinner in you, Lord have mercy, and be willing to disown, uh, to walk away from, uh, to release, and to let go of that wrong belief, then I will come unto you. He says, look in your Bible. I'm in John chapter 11. I'll give them back to you again before I go so you can read it and follow up behind me and check me out, you know, because some of you know, I, you know, I know I got them lookers that do that, so I'm going to give you the word back so you can see exactly where I am. So, but check it out. This is what he wants to do. And so then he comes down to verse 39 and what he says is, he says, roll away the stone. That's what he told them. So the issue is, is that you got a stone right there, right there, that heart. Roll away that stone. Roll away that stone. If you will get rid of that stone, light will show back up for you. You'll get rid of that stone. Take away that stone. Roll away that stone. Roll away that stone. And I please, I need you to understand and see something. I got revelation on concerning this uh, last year, I think it was. He told them to roll away the stone. Jesus didn't roll it away. He said the same ones that put you in there will be the same ones that will get you out of there. So what he means by that is, it's the same reason that you allowed yourself to get in that tomb, then you let that be the same reason that you came out. So the reason you went in that tomb is because you holding a grudge against some people. Well then let them people go and that tombstone will roll away, okay? If you will let them people go, think about the people you don't like, the people that you haven't forgiven, the people that you don't want to release, and and then that's how the stone will be rolled away because see you got this stone in front of you that's holding you hostage because of something you're holding against someone else and they literally are free so you are literally hurting yourself so Jesus contrary to what you want to believe and contrary to what we have been taught even in the church world uh uh no 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 he said you roll away the stone that's what you do you roll away the stone learn to appropriate the bible for what it really says it's just like when he says, you humble yourself under the mighty hand. He didn't say, I will do it for you. You humble yourself. So he says, you roll away the stone. The same reason why you were in there, because you're mad at Jack and Jill, because they went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Well, then, okay, man, you, you forgive Jack and Jill, or stop hating on Jack and Jill, because they were able to get up that hill and roll away that stone, so that he's able to come unto you. That is when he was able to speak. If you will notice uh, the Lord did not speak until the stone was moved Lord they don't hear me tonight I gotta get out of here y'all I gotta finish working listen uh, he did not speak until the stone was removed so for some of you that are sitting there telling me I'm just waiting on the Lord to give me a word well that's why you still waiting and that's why you ain't heard no word because uh, the Lord cannot speak beyond your stone you still sitting around here mad at folk you still sitting around here holding grudges against people about something you done did. You mad at folk are they talking about you but you the one doing wrong. You know they gonna talk when you do wrong. Uh-huh. They ain't gonna talk too much about you when you do right. But you know they gonna talk when they hear about you doing stuff you ain't got no business. So what is you mad at people for? For them running off at their mouth. You, 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 you gotta take responsibility for it. What are you angry about? You roll away the stone. You roll away the stone. You roll away the stone. When the stone was rolled away he spoke. And when he spoke, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Brought him, slap out the tomb when the stone was rolled away. So to my people that are trying to figure out how am I going to get out this hole? How am I going to get out this dilemma? Lord, have mercy. I've been locked up in this long enough. What am I going to do? Roll away that stone. Roll away that stone. That's what you do. Roll away that stone. Roll away that stone. Let them people go. Forgive them, folk. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. You shouldn't have ever thought you were perfect anyway. I don't live no day thinking I'm perfect. Not no day. Show sure up wasn't a day. Oh, Lord, because I could up the day. Show sure up wasn't a day. Uh-uh. So <laughs> that's what you get for thinking you were perfect anyway. Thinking you were beyond messing up and making any kind of mistakes. That's the reason why you found yourself there. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone so the Lord can fix things for you. So things can be restored. Things can be repaired. Relationships can be rekindled. Things can be revived and all. So 
roll away the stone. That is a word that the Lord wanted me to give to y'all tonight. Roll away the stone, baby. Roll it away. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for tuning in with me tonight and allowing me to be a part of your night. This is, you might as well go ahead, I guess, and call it a nightcap. You know, this is uh, the Thursday night nightcap. You know, Thursday night, what is this, October the 1st? This is October the 1st? Yeah, you might as well roll away some stones for this new year. Roll away some stones. So this is your nightcap. I am Pastor Delphine Lee. Pastor, a wonderful place by the name of Total Restoration Empowerment Ministries known as Trim. Trim. Damn. Trim, baby. So, I love y'all so much. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you. May the angels of the Lord be in camp round about you. May the Lord bless us tonight with beautiful rest, beautiful sleep. Give us another glorious and victorious day on tomorrow. Remember, for those of you that are in the local area, we will be set up at Tasty Treats tomorrow. The food truck will be set up out at Perry Store uh, Intersection right at Highway 134 in Kinston. We will be set up tomorrow between the hours of 11 and 6. We take an intermission between 1 and 1.45. That is a break that we have to take in order for us to restore things, you know, to uh, restock and wash down some things and all. From 1 to 1.45, we catch a break, but you feel free to come out and see us tomorrow and enjoy some wonderful food. I got some new things that I'm going to be putting on the menu. I'm going to try some um, Philly cheese steak. Sloppy Joe's. Yeah, it's Sloppy Joe, but you do all the stuff like the onions and bell peppers like you do with a Philly. I'm going to introduce them tomorrow. So I'm constantly changing things and constantly, you know, just, I just don't like for things to be the same. You know, it's just point blank. I'm very spontaneous. That's just my nature. That's just how I am. So just that's just me, very spontaneous. Can't wait for the husband to find out just how spontaneous I can be. All right, I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Be good in Jesus' name. Amen.